uh, it's a real pleasure for, to be here today. I represent the Ministry of Petroleum and Energy, but also the chairmanship of the Nordic Council of Ministers. The Nordic Energy Corporation has, uh, the last years, put a lot of emphasis on en renewable energy and energy efficiency. The EU, EEA and European challenges have been the main drivers behind uh, this uh, conference. Uh, thank you to the uh, office, uh, Nordic Council Minister's office here in Tallinn who has prepared the, the event. Uh, I think it's an added value of uh, Nordic Baltic uh, Aid Corporation and an excellent idea to learn from each other. Uh, I think uh, we, we should continue to do this. Um, Looking into the Norwegian situation, I think uh, even if the figures are uh, very old here, I think the main, main point is to see the difference between the Norwegian energy production and the Norwegian energy consumption, uh, which puts Norway into a very special situation. Uh, in addition, we have a very high share of uh, hydropower electricity production. Uh, but, but nevertheless, Norway uh, is affected by the energy policy debate and the legal developments in the EU. Uh, but I think this is, in a nutshell, the, the, the situation. If you look into the uh, electricity production, uh, the installed capacity is 30,000 megawatt. The production is, is very high. It was 128 uh, terawatt hours in 2011, and it's, uh, it was 133 in 2009. Uh, Norway is the sixth largest hydropower producer in the world. Uh, 96 to 97 percent of electricity production comes from hydro. Uh, uh, Norway has 50 percent of the reservoir capacity in Europe, uh, and Statkraft, uh, the main electricity company, is the larger, largest producer of renewable energy in, in Europe. Uh, I cannot uh, uh, go from this meeting without mentioning the Nordic power trade. Uh, during the 1990s, the Nordic countries created a framework uh, for a common power market uh, based on open competition. This was the first international open market uh, in the world. Uh, Nord Pool, uh, was also the first international commodity exchange for trading power. And we see now that there is a strong link between Nord Pool and the Baltic countries. Uh, Nordic electricity market is an integrated part of the European power market. And we see there are new plans to, to build interconnectors to UK uh, and to uh, Germany and uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, the model for market design, uh, uh, this has been a model for market design in the uh, Baltic countries, which we see in the, in the BMIP process. So, what are the main issues in current energy policy debate? Uh, it's uh, to develop more renewable power production. It's to develop the national uh, grid further and it also to build interconnectors with uh, other countries, and also energy restructuring uh, and transformation uh, uh, with high focus on energy efficiency. But the, the sensitivities in Norway is uh, basically it's uh, to how to generate more power production and how to uh, get uh, the uh, acceptance of of building uh, uh, to upgrade the national grid. Uh, it has been some very, very tough discussions in the, uh, in the public. Okay, so why increase grid investments? That's security of supply. It's climate renewable policies, and it's also value creation. So that's, I think, I should not uh, use too much time on that, but it's, that's the main, main reasons. And, and to the EU relations, uh, I think uh, the renewable energy dimension and policy dimension is, is, uh, is a part of the Norway-EU relations in different uh, fashions. EU-Norway, we have a very good energy policy dialogue with, with the energy commissioner. That's one or two, twice a year we have a meeting with the commissioner. Renewable policy is a part of that discussion. 
And then we have the European Economic Area Agreement since 1994 entered into force. And renewable energy has been an important part of the agreement uh, since uh, renewable energy policies are related to the internal market. So we uh, 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 adopted the Renewable Directive number one in 2005 and the Renewable Directive number two in 2011. Uh, and then we have the, uh, some other initiatives like the North Sea Offshore Grid Initiative, uh, which is now uh, more entering into the EU format, and the Baltic Energy Market Integration Plan, where you have also discussions on renewable, uh, the Energy Infrastructure Package and the uh, regulation, which is in process. We see that re renewable discussions are taking place in the regional groups. We have the Intelligent Energy Europe, we have concerted actions, how to transpose the directives, and we have technology cooperation in the framework program seven. And then we have the cooperation mechanisms, uh, which uh, under the renewable directive, we have the Baltic Sea region energy cooperation and the Nordic Baltic eight. That was a very short summary. And then to the uh, uh, renewable energy directive, and here you see the uh, so-called, I think so, somebody calls it the burden sharing and somebody calls it the, the effort sharing. Uh, I have added Norway here uh, on this list, as you can see. And the first striking information is the stretch in the renewable policy race. It's a stretch between the higher shares and the lower shares. So uh, uh, the dark green is the situation in 2005 and the light green is the target in 2020. This is well known for you. Uh, no, we know that the EU policymakers want to uh, discuss 2030, 2050. And it's, uh, this is a very important uh, debate. I mean, just the Norwegian target is 67.5. And in the trajectory uh, delivered in the renewable uh, plan, I think the 2012 uh, figure was 62.8. But I think we are above that level. I don't have the exact number, but we are above that level. Okay, the renewable directive, uh, we had discussions with the commission in 2010, 2011. What should the, tar the main part of that discussion was, what should the target be for Norway? Uh, we succeeded to have a, uh, an agreement and the uh, directive was adopted in December 2011 and entered into force uh, uh, some days later. Uh, the target I mentioned, 67.5. Uh, in the meantime, we have discussed with, this, with Sweden to uh, introduce the, the common certificate market, which could be uh, uh, which, which, is, which, which is one cooperation mechanism actually under the directive. And that entered into force the 1st of January 2012. So, and then in June, we delivered and submitted the National Renewable Action Plan uh, six months after the adoption according to the agreement. And then to the Swedish Norwegian Green Certificate Market. I think there is a Swedish representative who, 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 who may also cover this, but the, the point here is that uh, Norway, has, uh, uh, Norway and Sweden has a goal of increasing renewable energy production by 26.4 terawatt hours by 2020, which is a significant number. Uh, and this represents 13% of the total uh, renewable energy production in the two countries today, and 10% of the total energy production. Uh, the common certificate market is to take effect from the first was, was to, took effect from the 1st of January, and it would last until the 31st of December 2035. So it's a long-term uh, project, uh, which should give uh, uh, predictability for investors in renewable energy. The system is technology neutral, and you can see some beautiful pictures from uh, hydro and wind energy. The functioning of the system, uh, its market-based support scheme, it's, uh, it's different from the feed-in uh, system, and it's, uh, the producer will receive one certificate per megawatt hour uh, renewable. Electricity suppliers and certain consumer groups have a statutory duty to buy green certificate 
and this will create demand for certificates. Um, and the producers, they, they, receive they, will, they will receive certificates, will, will earn an income from selling certificates in addition to the income they receive from the sales of electricity. So uh, the system is, oping, uh, is operating. Uh, the organization on the Norwegian side is that the, uh, uh, Nor the no our regulator, the Norwegian Water Resources and Energy Directorate has the supervisory authority of the green certificate market in Norway. And you can, if you want more information on that, you can, you can go to the website of, of the uh, independent regulator, NVE, um, and look into the, 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 the details. Uh, I'll just conclude to say that the renewable energy in Norway, the debate, uh, there are political sensitivities related to the, to add pro uh, more production and to build uh, new infrastructure. Uh, so, not in my back. This, this, this is an old, uh, of course, uh, uh, phrasing. But the uh, "not in my backyard" the, the uh, syndrome is really uh, on the uh, on, uh, is really uh, the case in Norway. But I think uh, there is also a, a, a willingness among the political parties to, to develop uh, renewable energy. So let's see uh, how this is being operated and the cooperation with Sweden and the other Nordic countries is very important. Last week we had a meeting in, the, in Trondheim, a ministerial, and uh, the ministers, they uh, took note of the fact that uh, uh, cooperation uh, in renewable energy policy is very important among the Nordic countries. And they also took note of this, this conference here today. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much. And we have uh, time for one small question.